Good afternoon and welcome everyone. I am the Laura Walsh and I'm the Director of Development for the College of Health and Human Services. And uh, we thought it was important to host this webinar um, this time of year because it's ordinary difficult time with the holidays, but as a result of COVID, we're all coping with many changes to our home, school and work life. Um, so a couple of things before we begin with our um, guest, Dr. Michael Reppi, is um, this webinar is being recorded and you will have the chance to view it again. We'll send it out with the link um, after the session today. Um, questions, um, we welcome questions and they are anonymous. So feel free to put in the chat um, whatever's on your mind. If you have previously submitted questions, um, they will be key keyed up um, after the presentation as well. So um, I'm going to do our introduction for our guest speaker today, and then we'll get right into it. Um, but thank you all for joining us. We're really pleased um, to have your company on this important topic. Um, Dr. Michael Ruffey received his bachelor's in secondary education and his master's in special ed from West Virginia University. We will forgive him for not coming to Mason the whole way. <laughs> he received his PhD in special education with a minor in healthcare administration from George Mason University. Dr. Reppy served Dominion for many years as director of education services before assuming the position that he currently holds as senior director of clinical services. In this current position, he has grown Dominion's clinical programs, including opening off-campus adolescent outpatient programs in Falls Church in Chantilly, Virginia, and launching complex trauma disorders and school refusal specialty programs. He is a published author, and he remains active on the faculty of George Mason University, teaching courses in the College of Education and Human Development, and serving as a faculty advisor and practicum supervisor. He has made numerous present presentations on behalf of Dominion Hospital and George Mason University. He is active in the community where he serves on the Fairfax County Children's Behavioral Health Collaborative Management Team and the Fairfax Prevention Coalition. He is married and he has two boys, which I'm sure keep him very busy. And he is avid about health, fitness and wellness and can often be found running, road biking or snow skiing in his free time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, and I'm going to turn over the reins to our um, guest, Dr. Michael Reppi. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Uh, great to be here, and, and thanks for the introduction, and, and probably a, a good segue to some of my uh, self-care activities. So hopefully everybody can see my screen. Again, I'm, I'm Mike. I'm the uh, Senior Director of Clinical Services at Dominion Hospital which is in Falls Church, Virginia. It's a 100 uh, bed behavioral health facility. Talk a little bit more about uh, Dominion later on, but um, the presentation here today, put on your oxygen mask first, uh, which is uh, putting the self back in self-care. I'm guessing not many of us are flying these days, but having flown before, and looking at the little instructions uh, in, in the uh, little uh, uh, seat uh, back in front of you, uh, obviously the, the, the diagram and the directions and really the call to action to put on your oxygen mask first. Um, so as we go through this presentation, I'd really like you to be honestly reflective and uh, hopefully I think one of the key takeaways I'd like people to challenge to commit uh, to making some changes in your life. Um, and I hate to disappoint you, none of this is rocket science. Uh, I'm probably not gonna say anything truly profound uh, during the course of this presentation. Uh, most or many of you guys know what you should be doing already. Uh, but again, I'll use the word commitment and, and you may need to commit to change and consistent application of these concepts and uh, again, you need to commit to putting on your oxygen mask first. Uh, so some of our learning objectives, uh, just understanding the importance and outcomes of maintaining self-care, uh, learn strategies for scheduling uh, self-care. Yes, you need to uh, schedule for this, make time 
uh, for self-care. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some techniques for self-care, uh, although uh, I'm not going to, to really say too, too much about that. And you'll learn why here in a little bit. And then we will share some uh, additional support groups uh, and other uh, resources for you guys. And then last but not least, uh, I think uh, levity and especially this year, uh, levity is important. So I don't know, to be honest, how uh, I got so meme crazy. I, I can assure you that I'm really not that into memes, but hopefully you guys will also experience some, some laughter from uh, some tasteless memes that are loosely associated uh, to the topic. And the first meme being uh, good old Steve Harvey. Uh, and this meme is saying uh, that thinking that caused the problem, it's not the thinking that will fix the problem. So again, uh, challenging, guy, challenging you guys as we go, again, to, to make some commitments and, and first off to, to really look at your thinking and ask yourself whether or not you need to change your thinking. So if Steve Harvey isn't intellectual enough for you, uh, perhaps here's another quote. Uh, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. Uh, that uh, person was a guy by the name of Albert Einstein. Again, we can't solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. Um, so again, have you ever thought, um, I don't have time to put myself first. Uh, I feel guilty uh, about taking care of myself before others. Uh, it's all my fault. Uh, I feel ashamed uh, that I can't get it together. Uh, how about this one? I'm exhausted and tired all the time. Um, if this was a live presentation, I would ask for a show of hands. Uh, for uh, some of those uh, thoughts that you may have had. Uh, feel free to put uh, in the chat box which of these or perhaps uh, something similar uh, that applies to you, a thought, uh, a problem thought, if you will. Um, but I'll, I'll end this slide with asking the question um, and challenging uh, this thinking, uh, are, are you living or are you just existing? Uh, existing, I think, is a trap that we easily fall into. Uh, existing is, is really just kind of a long survival, doing what you have to do to get through the day. Uh, living is, is obviously completely different. Living is taking life as it comes, embracing it, uh, doing as much as you can to feel fulfilled. And I think self-care is critically important in moving beyond uh, just merely existing uh, to really living. Um, so our next meme here for all you cat lovers, uh, I thought this one was clever. In the event of the loss of cabin pressure, the oxygen masks will drop down and then you can bat them with your paws, right? Um, why put on your oxygen mask first? Uh, remember the old cliche, uh, take care of yourself first or you will have nothing left to give. Uh, or maybe uh, we can't give uh, what we don't have. Um, so putting on an oxygen mask, our oxygen mask first, uh, does not show a lack of love or care for others. Instead, it really shows a uh, care and love uh, for oneself, for ourselves. And obviously the analogy, if you run out of oxygen, uh, you can't help anyone else with their oxygen masks anyways. And uh, you, you have to have the mindset of loving yourself first and, and you are a mirror uh, for others in your life. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but uh, uh, no better way uh, to set a good example and uh, show others how you want to be loved, uh, treated uh, and respected. So, um, so are you putting on your oxygen mask first? Uh, ask yourself, when was the last time you did something just for yourself? Um, when was the last time you did something just for yourself? Uh, if you can't recall, or maybe it's been longer than, than a week or so, you, you really need to make a plan. And uh, self-care really doesn't necessarily mean me first. Uh, it means me too. So we have to be carving out time, uh, committing uh, to carving out time for ourselves. Uh, so our next meme is, is good old Dr. Evil. 
Um, you guys are probably familiar, uh, suffering from burnout. And I could probably do my Dr. Evil voice, but it would probably not go over well. Um, uh, so Mike Myers is funny. Dr. Evil is funny. Uh, burnout certainly is, is not funny. Um, taking care of others uh, can obviously easily deplete uh, the caregiver. Um, should point out that the World Health Organization, the WHO, has declared uh, a global health, mental health crisis and defined burnout as both an occupational risk and a workplace condition. And, um, you know, we live in a country where, where respite, uh, rest, time off, to be honest, seem to be like luxuries. Um, doing some research for this presentation, uh, looking into this slide and, and burnout, uh, out of the 21 richest countries in the world, the United States is the only economy that does not guarantee its workers paid vacation. A uh, big difference between vacation and leave and that mindset here in the US versus uh, lots of other parts of the world. Uh, and close to one in four Americans have no uh, paid vacation. Um, so you can obviously see how we get into a recipe for burnout. Uh, burnout is, is a sense of reduced accomplishment uh, physical and or emotional uh, exhaustion. Um, speaking to uh, healthcare providers, uh, also probably familiar with the term compassion fatigue uh, or the cost of caring. Uh, compassion fatigue is the, is, the, is the result of the career that we, careers that we have chosen, the result of helping others uh, in emotional or physical pain. It's, it's a type of uh, secondary uh, traumatic stress. So burnout generally develops more slowly over time, uh, while compassion fatigue may have an unexpected onset and, and occur without warning signs. Um, should point out in, in self-validation or, or reflection or understanding, um, you know, that is not uncommon in our field and the majority of individuals in any helping profession uh, experience at least some degree of burnout uh, or uh, compassion fatigue in their lives. Um, but if you're not taking care of yourself, uh, some of those uh, symptoms also, in addition to burnout, uh, obviously stress, we'll talk more about that, fatigue, uh, health problems, uh, anxiety, uh, impaired sleep, et cetera. So again, um, as we're going along here, feel free to participate, feel free to Keep self-score, if you will, be honest with yourself, or are you experiencing uh, these symptoms? Um, love Ron Burgundy, um, some self-care there, watching good old Anchorman, perhaps, uh, some, some humor. Um, uh, I don't know how to put this, but Ron Burgundy feels he's kind of a big deal, right? Um, but when you practice self-care, uh, obviously, um, the, the results can be uh, significant, uh, hopefully feeling calmer, uh, being more grounded, uh, having more energy, feeling healthier, uh, improved sleep, um, better management of relationships, um, having less anxiety, uh, fewer intrusive negative thoughts, and, and really being able to uh, cope uh, better with, with life's challenges. Uh, a big word these days is, is resiliency. Uh, Self-care certainly leads to and can help build uh, resiliency. So self-care is an important part of building resilience uh, or back, bouncing back from stress, uh, trauma, uh, the burnout that we previously talked about. And uh, really self-care, we'll talk in a minute, can help you learn about yourself and can help you recognize uh, your responses to life stressors and, and hopefully develop more appropriate coping skills uh, to manage them. Um, so again, me too, uh, not me first, but uh, self-care is not selfish. Uh, here's a few reasons why uh, it, it molds authenticity. Uh, it's a way to get yourself to know yourself better um, give uh, some of these concepts a try for a month. Uh, don't wait for weekends. Don't put it off. Uh, put a little extra effort and commit yourself to doing hopefully something every day. And molding authenticity, it, it probably won't take long before you start to see some parts of yourself that either you forgot 
uh, or perhaps never knew uh, existed. And uh, then you can kind of have a, have a you know, uh, self-check, you know, and, and determining which parts of you are authentically yours and which perhaps aren't. We, we pick up a lot of things along this journey of life, uh, some more internal and, and some perhaps more uh, external. Uh, again, the, the oxygen mask metaphor, it, it's really the only way that we can take care of others. Uh, you can only take care of others if, if you're helping yourself first, uh, physically, mentally, uh, spiritually, uh, putting on a, a front, pretending to be strong uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, doesn't last long. Uh, that, that strength has to come from within. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, existing versus living. Um, again, wh which are you doing? Uh, many folks are okay with just existing. They, they wake up, uh, they, they go to work, they go home, uh, they eat dinner, they go to bed, and then tomorrow they do it all over again. Um, are, are we really going to wait until our retirement uh, before we, we decide to enjoy life? So uh, again, self-care is a big step to moving past uh, just existing to, to really living. And along those lines, I, I think it helps you find your purpose. Um, you know, there's there's times when we have uh, down days, weeks, or even months where we're just, just not in a good place. We're feeling unsatisfied. We're, you know, thinking there should be something more. Um, I, I think that's, you know, our, our body and, and our mind uh, signaling or, or challenging us to, you know, take, take a leap or, you know, move out of that uh, rut because there's, there's something else uh, out there for us. And uh, I think practicing self-care and knowing uh, or having that uh, trust between you and, and your inner self uh, will hopefully help you find your purpose in life and, and move you in the direction uh, that you would like to go. Um, motivation, motivation roots from self-care. Uh, how does somebody stay motivated? Uh, no answer for everybody across the board. Uh, nobody stays motivated forever, uh, but we all certainly have different uh, needs, different desires. Um, and, and some folks and, and often uh, those more uh, in touch with themselves and, and probably have um, uh, a recipe for self-care, know how to bounce back from a slump uh, while perhaps others uh, struggle to get uh, unstuck. And uh, last but not least on this one, it, it, it's a reminder that, that you are worthy. Again, that, that mirror to others and uh, uh, just, just really being able to acknowledge uh, you and, and self-validate your feelings. You're allowed to be sad. You're allowed to be happy. Uh, you're allowed to be uncomfortable. And, and just uh, that self-validation can really change your outlook on life. Uh, and by taking care of yourself, you're, you're really building a better or, or a safer space, I guess I should say, uh, around you for these uh, emotions. You're, you're reminding yourself that you're worthy of respect. Uh, and most certainly you, uh, including all of your strengths and weaknesses, are, are worthy of um, your day-to-day -day, uh, in, your, in your place uh, in this world. Um, this kid was just too cute. I, I had to include this meme. Uh, he's got this look on his face, right? It's been how long since you had a massage? You need to fix that. Um, so what is self-care? Um, uh, go ahead and, and put in the chat box uh, what, what self-care is or uh, means to you. Um, this, this meme is actually a little misleading, I think. Uh, the, the term has become mainstreamed, uh, and we have drifted, I think, from its actual meaning. And uh, so it's really, it could be, but not necessarily about a massage. It's really not self-indulgence. Uh, rather, it is self uh, preservation. Um, so uh, indulgence is, is a short-term uh, escape while self-care really shifts your relationship with yourself and those around you uh, in the, in the long-term. So the, the core of self-care and the realization we, we need to have, it's about listening uh, and, and tending to your needs uh, of, of your mind, uh, of your body, uh, and it's living a balanced life. 
Um, so we're going to see here in a second, this does mean different things uh, to different people. Uh, each of us certainly have different paths uh, or different parts of ourselves and different paths that we need to, to take uh, to care uh, for ourselves and, and different methods for uh, achieving this. So, so really self-care is something that refuels us rather than, than takes from us. And uh, again, it, it's a commitment, it, it's conscious. Self-care really is an activity that we deliberately do in order to, to take care of ourselves. Um, and uh, to segue maybe to our next slide, uh, another quote, uh, a guy by the name of Ralph Waldo Emerson from way long ago, uh, a poet back in the mid 1800s, uh, nothing can bring you peace uh, but yourself. Uh, so again, this, this uh, self-care really ensures that you are being cared for by you. Um, so a big takeaway, uh, self-care is not one size fits all. Uh, uh, I think for most things in life, one size does not fit all. Uh, the, this, this cat, uh, again, uh, for you cat lovers or otherwise, uh, found out otherwise that, that one size does not fit all, right? Um, but interesting to learn in, in preparing for this, that, that self-care is just a huge industry in the United States, uh, over $10 billion a year. It's really the new self-help of, of the uh, 80s and 90s, uh, back when aerobics and uh, self-help books and, and whatnot uh, became uh, popular. Uh, if you plug in self-care to Amazon, uh, you'll get over 80,000 uh, results of products that you can buy uh, for self-care, uh, from books to affirmation cards, a lot of skin care and candles and baskets full of things and, and uh, uh, planners and, and um, uh, even kimonos and different sweatshirts uh, may be great, uh, but may not be the size that, that fits you. So it's what it does for you uh, that's important. And, and remember, it, it, it takes time and, and requires commitment um, so again, it's, it's not that, that uh, you know, one day or, or once a month uh, indulgence, uh, it, it's, it's quite different. And uh, again, going back to that commitment, uh, remember that it takes a little while uh, to make a behavior a habit, at least uh, two months typically. Um, so uh, again, challenging folks to, to commit uh, to some changes here when we're done. Um, and, and it's okay if you miss time, if you miss a day, uh, research does show, um, you know, missing a, a day or two does not necessarily affect making, uh, hopefully in this case, self-care uh, a habit. So um, hopefully you're, you're uh, making an investment in yourself, uh, your validity, um, your happiness. Um, so again, one of our big takeaways, we got Oprah. If Oprah says it, it must be true. You get a schedule. Uh, Y'all get a schedule. Uh, so we need to schedule self-care because as I just said on the last slide, self-care is really an investment in you. Um, I'm guessing many or most of you guys have all heard the term pay yourself first. And if I was again speaking to, to a live audience, I'd, I'd have somebody raise their hand and Tell us what that means and, and where you heard that. Could be from a, a parent, could be from a financial planner. Uh, why? Because paying yourself first is one of the pillars uh, of personal finance and, and really considered the, the golden rule, uh, to be honest, by many uh, financial planners. Uh, why? Uh, when you prioritize savings, you're telling yourself that your future uh, is the most important thing to you. Uh, people with large emergency funds tend to have fewer emergencies uh, than those with, with low or zero balances. And, and as I, you know, was thinking about this, you know, there are really just a lot of overlaps uh, in the analogy of paying yourself first financially versus self-care. So when I, I, you know, say that again, if you have a large financial money, emergency fund, you tend to have fewer, quote, emergencies than, than those with low 
or zero balances. Self-care is, is the same way. If we are making that investment in ourselves every day, if we're paying ourselves first every day, we're building that equity. So then when, you know, all heck breaks loose one day, that emergency, that rainy day fund, you, you, you know, can cut yourself a check and, and you can weather that storm much better than somebody that, that has uh, no money in their account. So I think that's just a great analogy and, and, and I think makes a lot of sense. Um, so we need to schedule it. So um, as Oprah's uh, saying here, um, again, none of this rocket science, uh, add things to your calendar. Uh, let others know your plans in order to increase your commitment. Um, I think a big one is to look at how you spend your time and see where you're wasting time doing something that doesn't benefit you. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. Break that habit. Uh, create a no list. So, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're eating dinner. Why are you on your phone? Or you're eating dinner with your, your loved one or your children. Why are you, you know, checking emails? Why are you answering your phone if you don't have to? So create uh, a no list if you're able. So some techniques and strategies. Uh, I thought this one was was kind of funny. If you don't know who this guy, he's uh, Rafiki uh, from the Lion King, and, and he's uh, doing some yoga there, it looks like. And Rafiki uh, finds out relaxation techniques such as yoga, uh, helps manage stress, and then he can dangle the lion baby off the cliff stress-free, right? So, so there's another picture of uh, Little Simba being dangled doesn't doesn't seem too safe. But uh, the next couple slides again, just some techniques and strategies uh, while working from home, uh, while we're managing with social distancing and COVID, and, and of course for us uh, healthcare workers. Um, so Willy Wonka on this one, uh, not Johnny Depp, Willy Wonka. I, I just don't even give that uh, credence or or authenticity. Got to go with uh, good old Gene Wilder. Uh, oh, you're working from home. You must be getting so much done, right? Because it's just so easy. Um, uh, maybe not. So um, if you're currently working from home and, and need some help, I think uh, maybe pick one or, or more of these if, if you can, that, that maybe makes sense to you. And again, can you commit this uh, to doing it uh, at least till the end of the year? See what happens if, if you're able to do that. But uh, again, none of this really rocket science. Uh, keeping a regular schedule, taking those scheduled breaks, um, creating a home to work commute that that is kind of like a transition. You're not getting in your car. Uh, you're not riding your bike, but you're uh, commuting mentally and, and whatever that makes sense for you to have that commute transition from personal life to, to work life. Um, obviously, take a shower, fix your hair, kind of dress for work. Um, some other tips there. Uh, I do like the last one, particularly managing while working from home. If you have kids at home, get them involved in, in your self-care routine. Um, uh, for me, as my intro said, you know, it, it's running, it's biking, it, it's skiing. Uh, get your kids involved. Uh, so when my kids were younger, uh, we had a jogging stroller uh, that made sense. Uh, and then we progressed to, to, you know, bike trailers for, for bikes that you can tow. Uh, your child behind your bike, and, and now my 14-year-old uh, uh, gets out and has a road bike, and he's he's uh, biking with me for a couple hours, uh, typically every weekend. So uh, if you have kids at home, get them involved. And oh, by the way, it, it's also teaching and modeling uh, healthy behaviors uh, for your kids. Um, social distancing. Um, uh, so this meme, this, this is this is Auburn, Alabama, for you football fans of a couple of years ago. I believe this was a field goal run back for a touchdown, and, and Auburn beat Alabama. Um, so that one guy there, not not social distancing at, at the bottom, but uh, uh, again, uh, is there something here that that maybe uh, makes sense for you? Um, obviously, doing things that bring us joy, maybe trying something new. Um, we'll talk a little bit, I think, about exercise uh, here in a minute. Uh, getting fresh air safely, uh, changing your clothes, keeping a regular schedule. And the one I really like uh, on this side is, is, is finding the silver lining. Uh, I mean, let's be honest, 2020 has been a year that most of us 
uh, would like to forget, uh, but there really are some silver linings if, if we look for them. Um, myself personally, my, my routine, my life has, has changed uh, quite a bit, at least my routine has. Uh, uh, silver lining, there's, there's less traffic uh, at the beginning and throughout COVID. I definitely was working longer hours, but I was getting home earlier. And I, I think there's been a lot of uh, change in, in the Repi household family dynamic, spending, uh, to be honest, more time uh, with my kids. For me, a big one was going to the gym. Uh, I, I haven't gone to the gym since March, but uh, started in, in April or so to work out uh, in the basement with my two boys. And, and so again, I, I think, you know, we need to, what, what's the saying, when, when life gives us lemons, we need to make lemonade. So, you know, find the silver lining um, in, in uh, the year 2020 and with everything that's going on. Um, maybe my favorite uh, meme, uh, a child of the 80s. Uh, I'm no expert on COVID-19, but this is the cure, right? <laughs> I know that's pretty bad. Um, so self-care while, while managing with the, with the pandemic. Uh, hopefully you guys are doing uh, many of these already. Um, practicing safe behaviors, practicing social distancing, uh, controlling things that you can. Um, I, I will highlight, I think, the, the top two there, uh, balance between staying informed and, and limiting media consumption, um, and then utilizing resources with accurate information and in avoiding sensationalized media, perhaps if there is such a thing. Um, again, in, in researching this presentation, a, an interesting note, uh, according to, to Nielsen Global Media, uh, media consumption has increased 215% uh, during COVID, uh, with people now spending about 463 minutes, that equals about seven and a half hours a day, consuming media. That's combinations of TV, streaming video, gaming, etc. So if you think back to the uh, Oprah slide, uh, where the one bullet or I suggested to look at areas where you're wasting time doing things that don't contribute to your mental, physical, spiritual well-being. Well, here you go. You know, here's 7.5 hours on average that, that you can really uh, look to spend time in, in other activities. So uh, again, I think um, uh, limiting and, and perhaps picking something else uh, can go a long way. Uh, healthcare workers, um, really, you know, uh, healthcare heroes, uh, certainly uh, goes without saying, um, but, but I think, you know, some tips here, uh, recognize your role, hopefully you guys all do that, take time, no matter what your role on the front lines, but, but recognize the valuable role that you and your colleagues play um, in this fight against COVID or in Dominion's case, uh, for mental health and wellness. Um, think Maslow's hierarchy, you have to take care of, of the bottom of, of the pyramid there, your, your basic uh, needs of, of uh, eating and, and, and sleeping, uh, et cetera. Um, and then I, I think as difficult as it can be sometimes, just, just slow down and, and, and as you're going through your hectic day, take those little moments when you can, you know, uh, when you switch tasks, maybe some mindful breathing, uh, take breaks uh, when you can. Um, and again, going back to that validation, you know, get, get support, uh, talk to others, uh, other caring individuals in your life and, and uh, be relational and, and, and get that support uh, where you need it. Uh, really find ways to see the positive. Uh, I think Dominion Hospital, one of the things we do is, is mission moments. We explicitly start meetings and, and ask about uh, mission moments that occurred um, things that we do, um, helping others and in, in moving the needle. So I think we all need to sometimes remind ourselves of those mission moments. Um, talk quickly about COVID stress syndrome. That's an actual um, condition these days. Uh, you guys can, can uh, look this up and, and read a little bit more about it if you're interested. Um, interestingly enough, folks with in higher risk groups like healthcare workers were uh, less likely to uh, have or experience COVID stress syndrome. Um, women, the less educated unemployed folks did have higher scores of, of COVID stress syndrome. Um, 
and I think the thing to point out in reference to this research is that folks were attempting uh, to use uh, coping strategies. Oftentimes these were emotionally focused or really maladaptive ones like overeating or uh, using drugs or alcohol. Um, and the one that folks were least likely to engage in was, was actually seeking professional help, um, which, which really kind of segues to my last slide. Uh, and again, Dominion Hospital, um, uh, 116 bed freestanding hospital. Uh, we have five units, uh, our child unit, our adolescent unit, our adult unit. We have an eating disorder uh, treatment center. Uh, we have a complex trauma disorders uh, program. And then we have both on-site and um, off-campus uh, day treatment programs uh, called partial hospitalization and intensive outpatient programs, which are evening programs. So we have those for a uh, child, adolescent, and adults. Uh, and some of those are even virtual. Um, we do a lot of other uh, COVID-related uh, safety protocol. Um, but uh, Dominion Hospital, certainly a, a continuum of care uh, for our community uh, and those in need. So, so to recap and related, um, you know, start with self-care, uh, exercise, a healthy diet. Um, I do have some uh, approved apps or, or reviewed apps, I guess I should say, in our resource slide. Try some of those. They can work wonders if you're suffering from uh, mild depression, anxiety, um, mild PTSD, et cetera. Um, but beyond those, uh, you know, maybe seeking help uh, from a mental health professional. Again, some of our programs are uh, in the evening are, are, are less uh, intensive, some are more intensive, uh, depending on, on where folks may fall and their need for help. Um, and uh, if, uh, you know, therapy isn't working, uh, again, uh, more intensive treatment. Uh, obviously, you can talk to your uh, physician or if you are seeing uh, a therapist. And also, I'd, I'd highlight uh, EAPs. You know, oftentimes uh, employers have quite a few resources. So, talk to your HR, HR department about other resources like uh, an employee uh, assistance program. Uh, a resource slide. And then my last uh, meme is uh, pick one. We either have uh, Yoda uh, asking for questions or, or Buddy the Elf. I can't believe they're, they're playing Christmas music on the radio already. I don't know if that's self-care, but uh, anyways, uh, open it up for questions. All right, and thank you, Dr. Reppy, for that um, really comprehensive presentation. I think we all learned a lot about self-care and Kind of the behaviors that we can control that are within our control that can um, you know increase our mental health and well-being um, so we'll move to the q a portion of this event and we have a couple questions that have come in from the registration um, so we'll ask this anonymously um, for folks listening today if you have additional questions you can ask anonymously in the q a um, or you can just enter them in the chat and we will try our best to see if we can get to all these questions so um, <clears throat> For starters, someone, um, an attendee wrote in and asked, uh, I work in a public school setting with school counselors. Do you have any suggestions for self-care as a group, such as school counselors? That's a great question. Um, I, I think uh, there's a lot that you can do uh, as, as a group. Um, here at Dominion Hospital, I think we try to engage in that uh, frequently. We have a couple departments um, uh, that, that attempt to drive uh, some of those things. Uh, at the moment, uh, one of our uh, committees is working on uh, comfort carts, and that's something that actually is, is being taken to the units. Uh, we've, we've set that up permanently in some locations, and it's been, it's been uh, taken to our nursing units, so uh, different uh, sensory objects and, and some self-care uh, items in the form of a, a comfort cart. I think a great one for that is, um, you know, group fitness, exercising, walking clubs. We have quite a few folks here at the hospital who uh, leave the campus, you know, every day about uh, 1230 and, you know, all it takes is a 15 or 20 minute walk can do wonders. Uh, yesterday, uh, our expressive therapy department hosted a uh, uh, Mandala Monday 
uh, which if you don't know what a mandala is, it's, it's a little uh, kind of maze to, to color in, to, to draw, to doodle. And folks were encouraged just to go down to one of our art rooms and, and uh, you know, just, just kind of free art. They could do the, the mandala or, or they could just kind of doodle and engage in some conversations. So um, uh, meditation uh, in a group setting uh, can certainly um, be applied. Um, book clubs, so lot, lots of options, I think, for, for folks to consider. Again, what works for you guys? You know, uh, you guys may be walkers, you may not. So I think it, it really depends on, on you know, your crew and, and your coworkers. All great ideas. Um, we've got a couple more questions. So we'll try to get through them, um, through them all. What recommendations do you have to get a better night's sleep, especially when days can be long and sedentary? another great question and and uh those in my inner inner circle really know i, I sleep is i think you know one of the most important things there is um I, I really don't trade sleep for much of anything else um i i think you know probably my number one recommendation uh for sleep would be to to try and go to sleep and, and wake up at con consistent times that that circadian rhythm um if, if you do that consistently um you, you, you probably won't need an alarm clock. And, and I'm not joking when I say that, you know, with, within about a month or two, your, your body really thrives on that. I think the other big one is, is exercise. Um, uh, exercise has been, you know, clinically proven research to, to provide more benefits uh, sleep-wise than, than, than sleep aids. Um, so exercise, uh, folks uh, fall asleep faster, folks who exercise, uh, they go into REM sleep, uh, that dreaming stage of sleep more quickly. They stay in REM longer. Um, and then I, I think, you know, uh, you spend uh, a third of your life uh, asleep, right? So, you know, having, you know, the appropriate uh, uh, gear for, for that, uh, that uh, event. So your, your room should be an appropriate place for that. Uh, uh, cool, dark, um, et cetera. Try really only to sleep in bed, we don't have a, a TV in our room. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, watch the the, uh, the phone or the iPad, that, that blue light um, in the evening. Um, that's been shown, proven now to uh, trick your brain into thinking it's daytime and, and can uh, detract from sleep. So um, so lots of, of tips out there for sleep. Again, I, I, it's, it's super important. Uh, the two that stick out to me would be exercise, and trying to uh, have a good routine, uh, consistent routine. Excellent. Um, we actually have, um, the next question is, how do we move to a culture of care where the onus is on the organization to provide the right kind of climate rather than putting the responsibility on the individual to do the self-care? Well, that, that, that too is a great question. Um, yeah, and, and I think um, that really just starts at, at the executive level. I, probably a, a difficult answer for some organizations. Um, one of the things that, that uh, we, we talk about here at Dominion, at least I think in the leadership circle, it, it's, it's a kind of a funny sounding concept, but there's a book uh, out there called uh, Patients Come Second. And uh, really that notion, if, if you think about it, is that uh, we, we take care of our employees first, hopefully, and they will then be better able to provide great service, great care uh, to our, our patients. Um, I think, you know, injecting fun into the culture, uh, really prioritizing a uh, work-life balance. Um, and then uh, rounding, um, we uh, at Dominion, uh, we, we have uh, staff rounding where we're, we're talking with our staff. Uh, probably not a day or two goes by with, without myself asking at least one or two people uh, as I go about my day, uh, what are you doing for self-care? Uh, again, you know, 2020 or otherwise, uh, we, we need to constantly be having those, those discussions. And, and hopefully in your organization, if those types of things aren't happening, also reward and, and recognition systems, I think are important. But if those things are not happening, I think, you know, that needs to be escalated and, and your organization needs to you know, have some crucial conversations and, and, and talk about some of those things that uh, you guys have opportunities maybe more so for. Very true. Um, let's see, we've got a question in the Q&A. Um, 
As educators, as administrators, as therapists, we are all living with Zoom fatigue. Um, we, we, we used to use Zoom to connect with family and friends around the country, but now it seems like a bit of a chore. What other ways are people connecting with those they love? Yeah, I, again, that, that's a hard one. And just, I think, navigating uh, safely the, the world that we're living in. Um, first and foremost, adhering to, to local uh, restrictions. But beyond Zoom, I think it's about you know, safe uh, behaviors. Um, uh, obviously, in, in person is preferred. Um, if you, you do need to kind of maybe break some of those uh, protocols and, and beyond Zoom, uh, research has proven that, that there are less risky things we can do. And a lot of those occur outside. And I know I'm saying this entering, uh, you know, the winter season, but, you know, if, if there is opportunity, you know, can you uh, be with loved ones uh, outside six feet apart, masked? So there, there may be some mitigating strategies, but uh, I think the ultimate response to that is and until, you know, these, these vaccines come along and are, are widely available, uh, we, we need to just, you know, uh, maintain that balance of, of uh, safe and responsible decision making, uh, even given the fact that there may be some amount of, of Zoom fatigue, but uh, being creative in other ways uh, that we can continue to, you know, maintain those, those uh, social emotional relationships. Mm -hmm. No easy answers on that one, really. Mm -mm. No easy answer. Um, and then do we have time for one more question? One more. One more? Okay. Um, this one came in from registration. How can supervisors truly support employees, especially those with children or other family members to care for at home? I think that's that's a great one uh, as well. Again, I, I think um, going back to my comments about rounding, asking what they're doing, uh, that that's really can be, should be uh, an essential rounding question. So asking them, what are they doing? I, I think modeling healthy behavior. So. Uh, as a leader, as a supervisor, again, um, and going back to the early parts of the slide deck, you are a mirror for those around you. So modeling for, for your employees, these healthy behaviors, maybe engaging or putting on some of those um, activities. Um, uh, and then, you know, look for signs of trouble, uh, be, be flexible. Um, obviously, you know, uh, here in Fairfax County, a lot of uh, parents thought that, that some of their kids were going back to school today. That did not happen. Um, you know, so we, we need to just be flexible and, um, you know, uh, again, in understanding our employees as, as much as we can, having those, those personal connections, having those touch points where we're, you know, sensitive and, and savvy. And, and really, I think, you know, problem solving uh, together. And, and it's, it's super difficult uh, for all of us, uh, more so with, with children and I think especially young children at home. Absolutely. Um, well, with that last question, it's time to conclude the presentation. So we just wanna thank you on behalf of the College of Health and Human Services at George Mason University. Um, thank you so much for sharing your time, your wisdom and your resources with us. Um, so all those who registered will receive an email in the next few days uh, with this recording, um, as well as your resources, Dr. Epi, and a short event survey. Um, so please fill out the survey as this helps us improve future event offerings and you'll be entered in the drawing for a self-care package. Um, so thank you all for attending and we hope you take care. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.